As how people often say successful people always have their own way, in the overly saturated scene of K-pop where all acts try to make sure they look at their finest on every public appearance, the stylist teams from big entertainment companies have been seen to do the opposite things lots of times, literally clowning their artists in public events just because they believe the goddess visual of these idols would save the looks regardless of how weird the outfits might be. Number 1. New Jeans Despite having always been referred to as the syndrome of not only K-pop but also South Korea and thus bagging all the most valuable CF deals in various industries, ranging from high-end fashion to technology, education, and even F&B, New Jeans members have still fallen victims into the experimental fashion traps ironically set up by their own stylists. If you want to know more about some previous occasions of the acts being turned into clowns just because their stylists wanted to push the boundaries and put up the experimental spirit so that new jeans would stand out both music-wise and fashion-wise, you can quickly check them out here. As if those times weren't bad enough to make people second-guess about new jeans' fashion sense, most recently, the group has been embarrassed by their coordies once again appearing with questionable stylings right on Ulkin's show from Seoul Fashion Week, aka the occasion where people often put on their finest image to prove their class of fashion. Actually, from my point of view, netizens is calling these outfits of new jeans a fashion disaster is a bit too much, as the items chosen for each member were all in vogue and harmoniously mixed and matched. For example, trends like jeans, midi skirts, Y2K baby tee, leather, monochrome, and military patterns were smartly incorporated into the group's outfits and styled in a way that suited their teenage image, rather than making them look like ladies in their 30s. However, lots of people were still irked off when looking at the way new jeans carried themselves at this important event, and the biggest reason boiled down to how they didn't look harmonious as a group fashion-wise. And for certain members, the hairstyle even seemed to be done in a deliberately eccentric way to attract discussions. In other words, most found new jeans' outfits questionable and laughable because the stylists were too greedy with their choices, or simply were too boggled to pick one cohesive theme for the groups, so they ended up stuffing a bunch of trends down people's throats. Besides, the color theme and combination of clothing textures, which are usually key elements to create a sense of harmony for a group's image, also stuck out as a sore thumb in the case of new jeans as they looked nothing but a messy hot pot. While the other members had white as the main color for their outfits, Hayne was made to dress in a completely out-of-place outfit whose black was a center hue. Not only that, the military pattern of her skirt as well as the heavy cyberpunk logo on the top were also said to make her a misfit. The Coordizi's choice of clothing texture combination also raised eyebrows, as while Danielle and Hani's outfits were made out of soft, flattering fabrics, Hayne and Hedden ironically contrasted with the dusty, playful Y2K items made out of jeans and spandex fabric. However, Netizen said the member looking most disarranged was still Minji, because out of the five, she was the only one wearing a full leather set. Talking of hairstyles, the element often carefully chosen to tie the whole outfit together and complement the members' facial features, new jeans stylists were also said to have done a questionably poor job. For Minji's modern outfit, the Kaordi styled her straight long hair that reminded people of characters in Chinese historical dramas. And for Danielle, whose outfit was trendy and flattering, her hair was said to look no different than a girl who was having her hair cut in the salon, yet suddenly being kidnapped by New Jeans' stylists and forced to appear at Seoul Fashion Week. And for Hayne, well, netizens were so fed up with seeing the same choppy bang and spiky bun that they didn't even bother to ask the Kaordis to change it anymore. Still, as I've said earlier, calling New Jeans' outfits a fashion disaster is a bit exaggerated as looking at their style individually, the girls looked quite trendy and unique. Especially for head and styling, though it's undeniable that the stylists made her look most out of place, their unique mix and match as well as the hairstyle never seen in K-pop before has received lots of positive reactions from netizens. Basically, the Coordi team of New Jeans has had all it takes to be professional stylists for such a syndrome girl group of Gen 4. But down the road, hopefully they could be more decisive in choosing the theme for the group for the sake of creating a coherent image. Number 2. Nmix 
chosen to be the global ambassador of Lueve despite having literally zero contact with the brand before, and Mix has been a subject of discussion countless times whenever attending the shows of the famous fashion house for looking so forced and awkward. Because the members are actually skinny and their visual are also top-notch, many believe NMIX's stylists are all to blame for lacking so much experience in working with high-end brands and choosing outfits that can best complement each member's figure. Partially, similar to the case of New Jeans, NMIX's appearance this time was also said to look too incoherent as a group. And thus, when looking at the girls sitting next to one another, some thought they were looking at six artists coming from six different agencies. In fact, some said NMIX's outfit looked even more severe than New Jeans's as the costumes of each member not only failed to downplay unattractive traits of their figures, but also highlighted such parts. For example, while the beauty standard of South Korea doesn't favor physiques with sloped shoulders and noticeable trapezius muscles, which explained why New Jeans' honey has recently been bashed on Pan, the Koordi styled Sulyan in a way that attracted all attention to her shoulders. While Kyujin and Jiwoo's physiques are heavily inverted triangular, they were dressed with items that were either sleeveless or cap sleeves, adding weight to their upper body and further distorting their proportions. With the long flowy yellow dress, Bae was said to look like a lady in their 40s got lost in a teenage girl group, and for some questionable reasons, Lily, aka the member with the best proportion, was dressed as if she didn't have time to change, from a basic dance practice outfit to the one more suitable with a high-end fashion event. In the comments section, netizens kept asking NMIX's stylists to resign ASAP from the position, and even the stylist's title and the fashion industry as a whole, because ever since the group's debut, they have never done their only job properly for once. The more people looked at NMIX, the more certain they were about how these little girls were done dirty by their stylists as rather than ensuring the members is looking at their finest. The Koordi seemingly just freestyle mixed and matched the outfits to check off their tasks. However, when I look at the way NMIX's coordies do their job and put it into a bigger picture, aka the concept that the act is set to follow, I believe they are actually just doing pretty well what is asked by JYP Entertainment. As we've all known, NMIX's color is basically a mix of everything existing on Earth together and besides music, that seemingly also includes their group's fashion sense and how they present themselves. Actually, I think JYP Entertainment's strategy for NMIX also includes mixing up things that are unpredictable, explaining why the member with best proportions like Lily and Bay were dressed in either extremely jumbling or extremely basic outfits, while others whose figures don't perfectly align with a beauty standard were given sophisticated and more revealing costumes. Number 3. Le Seraphim Seeing Le Seraphim being the act with the fastest growing fandom in K-pop Gen 4, their stylists have seemingly used this as the legit reason to care less about the girls' outfits, as they knew fans would still support the girls regardless. Just a few months ago, when Le Seraphim appeared on the red carpet of Nippon Geishi Hall, fans were both happy and annoyed, because on one hand, the girls have gone so far in the Japanese market already, but on the other hand, the way Le Seraphim presented themselves at such a prime event was too underwhelming and peasant-like. While the recycled patchy outfit trend was already a thing of 2021, Le Seraphim's coordies still opted for such items for the group's red carpet appearance. And as if that isn't outdated enough, they even incorporated elements that were extremely 2000s like felt fabric, fringe, torn tights, heavy silver piercings, and a choker. Out of all members, the outfits of Sakura, Yunjin, and Kazuha, all of those whose proportions are top-notch, were said to be most underwhelming. And what fans still couldn't wrap their heads around was that, while these members could easily pull off any type of stylings thanks to the ideal figure, the stylists still managed to downgrade their look, not only adding weight but also distorting their body ratio. For Yunjin, her out of shape and jumbling trousers with irrelevant silver details were said to increase her body width and similar thing also happened to Kazuha, as her pants were so sloppy that they completely diluted her hips, completely distorting her perfect silhouette and shortening her legs. Worst of all was probably the outfit of Sakura because as I've mentioned in this video, she has forced herself to lose so much weight that her head is now inordinate compared to the rest of her body. And rather than helping her compensate for this disproportion, the stylists even chose her a strapless rectangular felt dress with fringes at the end, covering up all of her curves and made her appear stiffer. The positions of tears on her opaque tights also stuck out like a sore thumb as they oddly concentrated in one area. 
From my point of view, I again don't think Le Seraphim stylists should be bashed that fiercely because one, they have been doing their job fairly well to portray the high fashion model concept of Le Seraphim. And two, the members might appear like that because of the poor lighting condition and camera angle. You know, journalists were mostly there to check off their tasks, rather than to make sure idols always look their best like master fan sites, so shoving all the responsibilities onto the Seraphim stylists doesn't seem to make sense to me. Plus, even when the Coordies indeed failed to compliment the girls' figure on that occasion, it was still a once-in-a-lifetime thing and obviously no one should be judged and asked to leave their job just because of mistakes that rarely happened. So, do you think these are really fashion disasters of K-pop? Or were K-Nuts making a storm in the teacup again? Comment down below to share your thoughts with us. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Be Boss TV for more interesting K-Pop content. Thank you for watching!